Hey there folks, Santee at Fears and the Ghost Riders here. We got mail. Santee, can you do a dressing the part the doctor? Mark Whitmoyer. Dressing the part the doctor? Yeah. We can do that. Doc Hostetler. John Bernard Books. You remember it. Sure, we've done a few videos in regards to medicine and healthcare in the Old West, but we haven't really done one on the professional who made it all happen. Just in the middle of surgery, poor woman, her stomach devil was about to explode. I had to take it out. Her appendix? That's a fella. The frontier physician could be anything in the range of a country horse doctor to a highly educated surgeon. Most people only required the doctor if the usual folk remedies or patent medicines wouldn't work. Could I interest you folks in some wild root cream oil? <laughs> Remember that, although the general public understood antiseptics and cleanliness, they weren't all that easy to practice. Even a skilled surgeon had infections to contend with. It's liberty! He's hurt! Whiskey, quick. Excuse me. Okay. <laughs> Dr. George Emery Goodfellow became a nationally recognized authority on treating gunshot wounds. It seems he had a lot of opportunity to practice since he set up shop in Tombstone. His success can be attributed to not only cleaning the wound tirelessly, but also disinfecting his hands before digging bullets out. In 1891, one of his peers, Dr. John Handy, had been shot in the abdomen and George traveled to Tucson as fast as he could to perform the surgery. You're pretty handy as a doctor. Oh, well, thank you. You're a good fellow. Are you always this stupid? Goodfellow was in the middle of repairing 18 perforations in Handy's intestines when the gutshot physician died. Although he was too late this time, Doc Goodfellow had an amazing track record. Well, not with me. Oh, be quiet. Now, in dressing like a doctor, I would stick to the townsperson look. Yes, they were a respected member of the community, but dressing like a gambler or mining tycoon would be better served for after hours. When they were working, like our other Old Westians, doctors had to be practical. Parts of a suit of clothing would be acceptable, a crisp white shirt with a tie, a vest with a matching pair of pants, and depending on the situation, the coat to go with them. Take a look at our Dr. John Handy in the doorway of his Tucson office. I think he's forgone the tie altogether. Practicality. A doctor would likely stay away from fine jewelry like rings due to emergency surgeries and delivering babies. Congress shoes and the like are good choices for footwear. Top it with a short brimmed hat like a Homburg or even a Derby. A top hat would work for more formal attire. A pocket watch would be a must for checking a pulse. Also, don't rush out and buy a stethoscope to wear around your neck. Early stethoscopes were simple looking wooden tubes that were monaural. Although the binaural ones were introduced in the 1850s, Research tells me many doctors preferred the monaural ones up until the 20th century. That leads me to the iconic doctor's bag, also known as a Gladstone bag. Essentially a stiff leather satchel with a spring closure. It held bottles of medicines and antiseptics and some surgical implements needed when the physician was making house calls. There are reproductions of these and of course the occasional antique pops up. However, considering those collectibles are about 150 years old, they are no doubt going to look it. The ones I've owned or seen outside of museums are in pretty worn out condition. Tinctures, balms, extracts, and even a mortar and pestle could be found in the physician's bag. I'll do an episode in the future about medicine bottles and labels, but in the meantime, start studying for those medical exams. It takes aptitude, strength, patience, and care. And a feeling for saving life. Now that's important too, isn't it? Most important of all. Well, that's it for another episode. Thanks for watching. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on down the trail.